Well, damn it. Here I am, on my way to Jewel, with a single launch space station, and Jam and Chips Kerman decides to go out on his own EVA and go and orbit the sun. How the hell did you do that? Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, you Welsh engineer, and welcome to Kerbal Quest Series 2 Part 30, Lathe Space Station. Yes, this is going to be a single launch space station on the way to Lathe to the Jewel system, one of the lovely moons there is out there. But first off, we have to launch it into orbit, and look at the wobble from this thing. Yes, perhaps I should have strutted it a bit more, or perhaps I should have put some of the rockets a bit further up, so they don't wobble so much. And there is a lot of energy on the bottom of that thing. That is why I'm doing this launch, this gravity turn, at a slower rate. And I have decided to do this construction in onion staging. By the way, if you want to be a Kerbal, don't forget to write Kerbal in your comment, so I can filter it out. And I think I missed a few people from the last episode from Addy. I know some of you wanted to go somewhere else, but this is going to lathe, so perhaps I left them out. But some of them I forgot to add entirely, so apologies there. However, let's continue on with the curls we have. First off, we need to get into orbit. And yes, you are flashing, you can see by there, is not lighting from the plant or radiation from the sun. No, it is caused by the RCS from the spacecraft. For some reason, you get the appearance in map mode sometimes. Not sure what causes it. Perhaps it's a mod or something. But whatever it is, in orbit we shall go. And perhaps a change of music. By the way, let me know if you enjoy the new type of music. I decided to sort of like branch out. And now Q comes for the change, because now we are on for a long haul on our way to lathe. So, a bit more spacey music. Anyway, on our way to Kerbin, to Jewel, look at this. We find that some Kerbals are still on EVA. Yeah, one of the episodes I EVA'd all the Kerbals to show them off who we've got. I forgot to quick save before, and so I forgot to quick load after or get my Kerbals in. For some reason, they've all drifted apart quite far. I've no idea why, probably because I've boosted them out at some point, but they do drift quite a bit. I'm wondering if that is true to life. Our burn now on the way to Jewel, which is a 1,700 or 1,800. It's near the 2,000 meter per second mark. You probably caught it at some point. Talking about the Delta V required to get to Jewel, a fact that the Juno spacecraft, which is currently in orbit around Jupiter, when it done its orbit burn or its transfer burn, it didn't go straight to Jupiter. No, it went into the orbit height around uh, Mars, I believe. It then done a correction burn to pass by Earth a second time. Why would you do that? Why would you go back home? Well, to get the gravity boost, which is called gravitational... Um, breaking, no, it's gravitational slingshot, where the planet, you pass behind the planet, and because the planet's traveling away from you, it pulls the spacecraft. But they've done it in such a way that when it left Earth, it had enough velocity, I think it gained about 6,000 meters per second, or something around that, extra speed. And that got it up towards Jupiter and the encounter. Now, we're not doing such a thing because we have more than enough Delta V for this thing. In fact, we have perhaps not enough to get to the moon that we want. Now, if I'd done this burn, got into orbit around Jewel, then done a direct intercept of lathe, then I suppose we'd have won't have enough delta V for the mission. Because if you look at the vessel specs, what how much delta V we've got? One thousand five hundred total delta V, and that's gone down to 1,400. Man, that is low. By here, you, what you're seeing is I realise that we're not in the same plane as the moons, or the major moons of Jewel. So I decided to do a correction burn. However, that takes 200 meters per second. That is delta V re required to get in orbit around Lathe. So let's go plan this out. So if you ever get to Jewel, what you want to do is use the moon's gravity themselves. I think it's called gravity assist. That's not gravity boosting or gravity breaking. You could call it that. However, this time we are gravity breaking. First encounter is with Lathe. I realize that it's not the first orbit we encounter Lathe. It was the second orbit. So as we are doing that, let's read out a comment from Ashram Plays. Can you try to build a Jewel place? Well, what do you think I'm doing by here, mate? <laughs> Corey Newhart. 
I just landed my Dragon, Dragon V3 on Mars and back. Did you do it in real solar system? If you did, that is absolutely awesome. If you mean Duna, that is still awesome, especially for a new player. And Vulp's Fox is back because he's sorry that his Wi-Fi took so long to fix. <laughs> oh, and I spike gaming. I realize it's you that broke the panels when the Mars mission won the rover. Anyway, there is the planet we want to get around on the moon. But before we can get in orbit around there, we're going to have to do a couple more passes of some moons. Yeah, by right here, I, the method I use is sort of like just adjusting your trajectory until you get an encounter. See if you can use that encounter. That one there, that encounter takes us into the surface's duel. And we don't want that. We don't want to die. So really, we have Kerbals on board, for God's sakes. But however, we shall do it. As we're doing those fly passes, Balaz, hi. Is my Kerbal at the asteroid base? No, it's not. It's on this mission. <laughs> the Diamond Hunter says, Hi, Orbiter. I have a question. How close can you get to the sun before burning up? And is it possible to build a station that can get into orbit around the sun? Yes, it is. How close? I'm not sure. In Kerbal Space Program, there is a limit to that. I know, but I suppose you can engineer a base. Put loads of heat panels and everything on it. Perhaps you can put the heat panels between you and the sun. I don't know. Anyway, with two more passes, this time round, let's get an orbit around lathe. So let's do an encounter. This time, let's work it out. And at this point, I realize we've just got enough to get in orbit around lathe. So as we are executing that burn, let's read to John and Benson. Yay, I finally went to space. You should find a creative way to rescue me and the other Kerbal stranded on Duna at the moment. Surprise me. Well, we may do that at one point. However, we have a lot of missions to do. I have some ideas that I want to get out of the way. And some other videos which might take up my time from Kerbal Quest. Games met Anki Christiansen. I have another Kerbal Quest. Can you build tanks and do a war on the planet? Yes, that's one of my ideas I want to do. I just haven't got around to do it. These videos take a while and work and everything else. Life gets in our way. But hey, you have to do it. Akroflock Venzer. Akrof coming back with a weekly comment. At last, what should we learn from our past mistakes? Well, nothing. We weren't doing anything wrong. We just need not to do anything wrong better next time. Then maybe we'll learn even less than nothing, hopefully. Welp, love ya. <laughs> Oh, this is my best part. This is my favorite part. Okay, so by here... Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I could have jettisoned those nose cones and saved weight. We'd have had that little extra delta V. And what I'm doing by here, I've got mech jeb on all the modules, and I'm going to auto-dock them all. I was hoping that I could auto-dock them and then switch between them. What I should have done was separated all the parts of the space station, so they're all floating, then got mech jeb, set up ready, switched to each one, then got them all docking. I think that would have been fun, actually. <laughs> uh, but in hindsight, I enjoyed doing this bit anyway. The, I, the thing with mech jeb is each one will operate independently. So if you got, I'm not sure what the limit is. I did try it out. They can all dock in themselves. You can see that one's struggling, but there. I think it does get it eventually. Yes, there it goes, Doc. Let's switch to another one and Doc. And we have Kerbals on board of these. I don't think I've balanced our RCS properly on these. I just rough guessed it. I even got Mech Jeb on the small struts with the solar panels on it. I think that's awesome stuff. Well, let's get to another comment. Ethan Gotcha. Do you have a mod list for your game? P.S. You're my favorite KSP YouTuber. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I think there's better YouTubers out there, but never mind. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to improve. So if you stick with me, we can improve together. Perhaps you can tell me what I could do to improve. You know, Kerbal Quest won't last forever. I'm going to have to do some new series, I suppose, at one point. I'm at episode 30, I think, which was when I stopped some of my series. But I'm not going to stop this one just yet. Because we have Kerbals who want to be on missions. And I can't leave them stranded on Kerbin. They have to be out and stranded in space instead. Anyway, oh yeah, jam and chips. Did you see your Kerbal? How did you do that? 
Challenge, build the smallest functional space station possible that has a docking port and a science lab and habitat module. I almost forgot Hei Jin Chan. Can I be a couple? Use me for a suicide mission, please. Well, if you mean stranded out in the Julian system as suicide, I think so. Anyway, let's open up these solar panels and, uh, yeah, just have some fun doing science and stuff. Even though we're playing in sandbox mode, you moron. I'm talking about me, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes. I do all my Kerbal Space Program in uh, sandbox mode. I can't be bothered to do that science. No, I had a bad experience, that's all. I might get to science at some point. I'm really tempted to install the Surreal Solar System mod. Anyway, there is my space station. Not as big as Matt Lowndes, I agree. But it's quite hefty. I think it weighed quite a bit. I think it used smaller modules. Anyway, Hayden Chan. We've got Jackman 17. Balloon Alarm 120, Kerman. Blah, 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 Kerman. Gecko Echo. Gecko Echo. <laughs> Ashman plays. Who's looking cool with those specs? Rob Kerman. And subject Alpha Kerman, who's been on, experimented on, and is not very happy, but they. <laughs> Hockey Man. 2675 Kerman, who we're going to use for a screenshot, I suppose. <laughs> All the Kerbals are floating about. Now, if I left them like that, I don't know what would happen to them. They'd probably get slung out into interstellar space. Yeah, by here, I'm trying to get a screenshot for my video. I thought this was an awesome shot. I'm glad, I'm actually, I'm glad that we're going to high orbit around Lathe. I know it wasn't intentional. I was going to do a circular orbit close to the planet. But that shot was priceless. Yes, fate is with us, guys. So let me know what else we can do. Don't forget to add your Kerbal to your comment if you want to be added as a Kerbal. Add a name if you want. And then perhaps we'll do something about that. Anyway, crank that like button like an engineer. I quick load so all the Kerbals are back in the station. <laughs> and I'm more beta. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Sending Kerbals out to be stranded in awesome places. Yeah, and ignore that menu. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.